4 o'clock, and we are ready to begin. My name is Rob Altamont, and I'll be your moderator for today's Eureka webinar titled The Basics of Epoxy and Shaft Installation. And it will be led by Hariko's Technical Director, Jeff Summit. Let me give you a little bit of a uh, quick bio on Jeff. Jeff's worked in all facets of club making and repair since 1984 and has devoted the past 20 years to researching, testing, and analyzing thousands of different golf shafts. He has compiled his findings and research into the Dynamic Shaft Fitting Index, which is featured in the best-selling book, The Modern Guide to Club Making, and Total Club Fitting in the, total in the 21st Century. Additionally, he has authored the annual Dynamic Shaft Fitting Addendum, which instructs club fitters in the proper fitting and selection of shafts. Both books are available online at harikogolf.com. Get a few housekeeping items out of the way first. Your audio settings are muted, which means we cannot hear you. And if you have any questions, please use the uh, question box located in the upper right-hand corner of your dashboard. If for any reason you must leave the webinar, don't worry. It's being recorded and will be on YouTube and on our blog in about one hour. So that's a bit. Uh, that's it for me for now. We'll take questions and answers at the end of Jeff's presentations, and I'd like to turn it over to Jeff. Thank you, Rob, and thank all of you for attending today's webinar. In our last webinar, we discussed the various types of ferrules and explained how to properly install them, including building your own ferrule installation tool. Now we're on to the next step in the assembly process, which is to epoxy the club onto the shaft. We sort of jumped the gun a little when we talked about ferrule installation. Because it was an important piece of information at the time, I mentioned it would be helpful if you put some epoxy on the shaft tip. This would act to lubricate and assist twisting the and sliding the ferrule into place and to secure it once the epoxy cures. Well, in today's webinar, we're thoroughly going to discuss the what-nots and what-ifs with epoxy and its application. Before we do, you might have heard the term glue and stick. This is somewhat of a derogatory term toward those who make clubs uh, as a hobby, or they simply add um, glue to a shaft and the head and stick them together. Well, after I get done here, you'll be able to set those straight and explain why you're not a, a glue and stick operation. So what exactly is a glue anyway? Well, it's an adhesive that bonds two surfaces together. Some examples of glue are Elmer's glue, model aircraft glue, Gorilla glue, and even super glue. These are all one part in nature, meaning that there's no mixing. Then you're probably wondering, well, what's an epoxy? Well, it too is an adhesive, but it's derived from two parts, one of which is called the resin and the other is the hardener, which are mixed together in a specific ratio. Now, glues are available in all sorts of strengths depending upon the application. Um, cyanoacrylate, easy for me to say, is a fast-acting glue, also known as instant glues. Crazy glue is a good example but you never hear of it used in golf club assembly. Why? Well, you might remember that old commercial with the iron worker holding onto his helmet glued to an I-beam. Well, if all we had to worry about was the pulling strength, then these types of adhesives would be perfectly fine. But we have to worry about the twisting strength, or what is referred to as the lap shear strength. This is the measurement of the ability to resist torsional force along the axis of the bonding surface. Instant glues often have low shear strength and are more brittle than their uh, slow setting counterparts. I believe the only commercially available one part adhesive for the golf industry was called Royal Onyx. I haven't seen it available in any of the other component catalogs for a couple years now. And I tested this product uh, years ago when it first became uh, available, and I declined to sell it to fellow club makers. So I don't suggest using any type of glue to bond a golf shaft to a golf club head. Reserve the use of any type of glue for loose medallions or decorative parts. So those who use glue to bond club heads to a shaft deservedly should get a bad rap. What we're going to talk about today are is about high strength epoxies exclusively for bonding a head onto any type of golf shaft. Now there's quite possibly thousands of epoxies commercially available. 
So which ones are safe for club assembly? Well, let me say that say this. There's two principles that you need to understand. First, you want it to uh, create a long-lasting bond between the head and the shaft. As a club maker, you're responsible for whatever you build or repair. So it's important you, you could do all you can do to ensure that that club will stay intact. Failure to do so can result into someone getting injured and that person coming back to you for some sort of restitution. This might come as a surprise, but the second principle is you want to be able to have an epoxy that you can remove the head from the shaft when called for. In some cases, a customer may want to experiment with another shaft. So it's important that the breakdown temperature is not too high that you're going to damage the shaft or the head during its removal. I remember several years ago, a customer had a problem with a particular set of steel shafted irons and offered to take them apart. I realize I've taken literally tens of thousands of clubs apart, so this wasn't my first rodeo. But never had I had so much difficulty removing a shaft from a club head. I finally had to call uh, the customer up to see what or how he secured the clubs together, because I thought he might have crimped the shaft or something along those lines. Well, he replied that he used JB Weld. Well, after a brief silence, I told him to pick up his clubs. I also told him I hope he likes, the, likes them the way they are because no one's going to be able to reshaft them. You see, JB Weld has a breakdown temperature of 500 degrees. While well, shafting epoxy sold by component uh, manufacturers break down in the 260 degree range. Now, the club maker did follow rule number one uh, because those heads were not going to fly off the head or, or, the, or off the shafts. But he did not follow the second principle in allowing for its removal. This is the very reason why I would only rely on the epoxies available by reputable component suppliers such as Harico, because they've been thoroughly tested and put through their paces. Anything else sets you up for a risk that could come back to haunt you later. Okay, now let's discuss the different types of epoxies um, you have available to you. There are basically two classifications, with the first being slow set, or what is generally known as 24-hour epoxy. The name should imply how long you should wait until you hit a ball. You'd be surprised by the number of uh, times I get a customer calling on the tech line saying, that the uh, customer epoxied the club at 8 p.m. last night, but his league starts at 4.30 in the afternoon. Would it be all right to hit the ball? Well, my answer never wavers. 24 hours means 24 hours, no exceptions. You're better off to wait an extra day than having the high pro probability that the head can come loose. Then you're going to have even more work in, in preparing all the surfaces now for the second time re-epoxy the parts back together, then you still have to wait 24 hours before you can hit that club again. Now this leads us to the next category, which is quick setting, fast setting, or sometimes uh, known as tour setting epoxies. Now let me say this. I try not to give the image that club making is like fast food. That is, you can put, toge or put together clubs and hit them instantly. I think it kind of cheapens club making. Fast setting epoxies came about because of the request of technicians and the bands that follow the players on tour. If the club breaks or needs a quick adjustment before a round, they don't have 24 hours to wait. They need it now. Yes, there's good fast setting epoxies available.